All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. Here we are. Holiday Hills Tournament Rookie Note Unveiling. Okay, actually what we've done, we've done three or four um, videos on the um, the qualification round and we had the rookie notes and we've done them in those sessions online. We revised a few things, we've added some things and now we're gonna share them with you. So let's go. All right, here we are. <clears throat> All right, rookie session, rookie notes, um, Holiday Hills tournament. There it is, rookie and the Holiday Hills above that. So with that being said, let's get right into it and uh, get this posted. All right, hole number one, part three, you can have... Uh, Couple choices here, uh, depending on the account level. I have two different levels. Um, the main level, which is aggressive rookie, we're using sniper five, six, or seven. And then for the regular or low level clubs, we're gonna go Viper eight. We're gonna use a katana in both. Shot one is 15% at mid adjustment. Uh, you're gonna bounce it into the green. So the preferred way for aggressive rookie is what we're trying to accomplish is the sniper seven half backspin half left spin ball guide through the hole second bounce position on the collar of the green looking for a funnel on the ball guide through the hole and then take your adjustment and make your shot um, if you're going to use a viper eight or seven uh two backspin two left spin you're going to land that second bounce bounce eight squares or the eighth square from the pin. So you're gonna be a row, which is equal to where the pin is. Then you're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight back from that row where the pin is. And then you're going to aim the ball guide at the hole from that point on. Then you're gonna do your 15% adjustment at max and take your shot. Again, our preference, if you'll see in the green here, the light green highlight, that's our preferred route or preferred chosen club to use, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me, hole number two, par five. Extra mile six or seven, big dog six or seven. So let me explain real quickly for some anybody who's never seen this um, these notes before. The extra mile six and seven, what that means is the six and seven have the same distance in the air and the same top spin. The big dog have the same distance in the air and the same top spin. They're identical. <clears throat> Excuse me. The only difference is in the club accuracy, right? So how many rings or how much wind per ring is going to push the ball in the air, as well as how much curl the ball is going to be able. So if you're going to do a big curl shot, you're going to want more curl than you're going to want less. So. We're not going to be curling it too much on any of these shots. So the extra mile six or seven, big dog six or seven, if you have either of those, you can follow these adjustments identically and you'll be um, getting similar results. Okay. So <clears throat> just want to make that uh, designation. Hole number two, par five. We're going to use a kingmaker here just due to the fact we want that side spin on the first tee shot. So your first tee shot's going to bounce on the left fairway. Do not go right if you have an extra mile six or seven and a big dog six and seven. If you're going to use this package, go to the left fairway. Might be a little bit technical on the tee shot, but it can be done. It's, it's not that hard. So with that being said, let's talk about it. Extra mile six or seven, two top spin, full left spin, and that yellow ring is going to cut the left rough okay plus you're going to do a half a ball of curl you should end up around 314 yards now this is the critical part you want your second bounce to be equal with the shadow in the fairway so there's these rocks on the right in the in the rough to the right of the fairway and they have the little bit of a shadow from one of the rocks into the fairway your second bounce 
has to be equal to that if you're going to use this adjustment of two top spin and full left spin. Now, what you want to do is do your two top spin, your full left spin, and get that yellow ring next to the rough line. Once you do that, then I want you to move your ball guide up or back to be equal to that shadow. Once you do that, you're ready to go. You then can go ahead and say, okay, four mile an hour wind at 10%, max adjustment. You can make that adjustment and take your shot at that point, okay? So, very critical steps there. You need to make sure you do your top spin, your left spin, put your yellow ring on the left-hand side, and then make sure the second bounce is equal to the shadow on the right-hand side of the fairway. Then when you get to the big dog, you're going to have big dog six or seven. You're going to go one to one and a half backspin. You're going to place that at plus nine yards at max adjustment. Get ready for that wind at max adjustment. The blue ring is just cutting the left rough. And then you're going to aim one square left side of the pin. And you're going to take your shot after you take your adjustment for the wind. Okay. Should be either an albatross or an eagle that's within one or two squares. All right, hole number three, par four. <clears throat> this is one of the uh, rough bump tee shots for a eagle attempt. So uh, we're gonna go kingmaker here again, extra mile six or seven. The elevation change is 10% downhill. You're gonna do the rough bump driver as your best option. Um, you're going to go extra mile six or seven at max adjustment, 10%, one and a half backspin, one half left spin, and you're going to rough bump it. Now, what's important here, there's that little area of rough between the bunker in front, the bunker behind, and the fairways on both right and left side. So it's kind of like a quadrant. You want your yellow ring all the way into the rough on all sides of the circle. Not any part of that yellow circle can be outside cutting the rough or cutting the bunker or cutting the other rough or the bunker. It has to be inside and all-inclusive in that uh, rough. Then what you need to do is maneuver it to find plus 15 yards. You're ready to go. 10% adjustment for the wind. Adjust for your wind. Hit it perfect. You're going to see a really great camera angle come... Um, going to swoop around. It's going to have your ball coming at you. It's going to land in the rough. Then it's going to follow you on the left-hand side, and it's going to roll right past the bunker. It's going to roll through the rough and just, just beautifully roll right at the pin and then just tail off a little bit to the left. Okay? So, and that'll put you six squares from the hole for an easy eagle putt. All right? If you want to tweak it and try to go for the hole-in-one, by all means, go for it, but be careful if you don't hit it perfect and you get too greedy and, you know, take some of that spin off, you're going to stay in the rough on the right or you're actually going to bounce and possibly catch that bunker on the right. And then you're going to put yourself in a world of hurt. You're going to go from eagle, guaranteed eagle, to possibly par. So that's not what we want. That's a two-shot swing, which would be detrimental to your overall score. Okay, hole four, par three. You got three options, Sniper 567, Viper 8, or the Big Dog 67. Our option here, I'm using Big Dog 6 or 7, but let's talk about the Sniper 7 first. For your first shot, you're going to bounce that shot off the fairway. The white ring is going to cut that left rough, okay? And you're going to have two backspin, four left spin, one-to-one -one adjustment, and the ball guide is going to be one square to the left of the cup. All right, and then you're going to take your shot at 10% um, with the wind adjustment at max and uh, give yourself a chance at uh, the hole-in-one. Or you can go with the big dog rough bump, which I find to be much easier. Zero topspin, seven left spin, which is your full amount of complement of spin to the left at max adjustment, 10%. The yellow ring is going to cut the left edge of the bunker in that rough area down near the green. Half of the yellow ring is going to cut the top of the rough and the fairway, okay? And then what's going to happen is that you're going to be able to um, hit your tee shot and hit it perfect. 
and you're going to give yourself a really, really great opportunity at the hole in one with that rough, uh, with that big dog rough bump. Okay. That's hole number four. All right. Hole number five of the holiday Hills tournament <clears throat> par four, uh, extra mile six, seven Goliath five, six, seven, or the Saturn six, seven, eight up to you. Um, first shot is 10% going to the left. If you're going to the right, it's like 10 or 15%. But um, in my opinion, the only way to go here on this hole, whether it's rookie or pro, you need to go to the left side and you have to get used to it. And it's the only really good way of getting an eagle here. So going to the left-hand side or the fairway, left fairway, you're going to use the extra mile six or seven, three and a half top spin, three left spin. You're gonna to drive to that left fairway with max adjustment at 10%. You should end up around 357 yards off this drive, okay, and those adjustments. You can then go with the Goliath seven if you choose to at four backspin, two right spin. You're gonna aim short and left of the pin, but unfortunately, you just don't have enough backspin um, to really give yourself a good chance at making that um, that shot with that topography of that green. It's just completely bumpy and uh, a lot of glitches up near the hole. So I think your best option, at least for me, in my opinion, in my experience, is hole, uh, this hole, Saturn 6 and Saturn 8 are your best options. You can see the differences in the adjustments. So let's walk through them. Full backspin, one right spin, max adjustment on the 6. Two squares, you're gonna be even with the hole, but above the hole by two squares, right? So I don't know how to really explain that other than there's the pin, you're gonna do full backspin, one right spin on it, you're gonna move your ball guide up two squares above the hole, and then you're gonna make your max adjustment for the win from there, and that's it. You're gonna hit it, it's gonna bounce right next to the hole, and it's gonna go right down and either be to the left or in the hole. All right, so it all depends on you know your ability to hit perfect and your precision adjustment on those ring adjustments, okay? Saturn eight, full backspin, one right spin, max adjustment, identical so far, two squares even with and above the hole, still identical on the Saturn six. The difference is you want it to be one square past the hole. Because of the additional backspin and the grab, you need that to land one square past. So you're gonna be two squares above and equal, then you're gonna move it one square past the hole, further away from you, then you're gonna do your max adjustment for the wind, you're gonna take your shot with a perfect shot, and you're gonna give yourself a really supreme opportunity to make an eagle there. And that's one on the field that no one's gonna catch you on. Well, not too many are people are gonna catch you on, okay? And if you get that, plus all the other par fours you're supposed to, plus the par fives, you, my friend, if you get it on the front and back, you are gonna win a banner, okay? So that's my opinion. All right, par five. Um, <clears throat> hole, or, yeah, par five, hole six, extra mile six, seven, big dog five, six, seven. We're gonna use a kingmaker here. And this is the one where you're gonna go down and hit it into that little pad. And then you're gonna go full, uh, full top spin or two, three top spin, full right spin, half a ball right curl with a max adjustment for the wind. Um, the yellow ring is you'll be cutting that right rough. You should end anywhere between 316 and 320. If you get out to that 320, it's gonna make it a little bit easier for your second shot with the big dog, but just be cautious. Anything further than that, those pine trees on the left may come into play. So be careful about going too, too far on this tee shot. Now, something that might help you to think about before you even get to this hole is when you are setting up, don't try to pull the adjustment back at you. You know what I mean when you're adjusting for the wind? Because the wind is coming from northeast all the way down to southwest. So it's coming from your top right down to your bottom left. And what happens is you have to pull zoom way out so you can get over the trees and make an adjustment. Don't do that. Just flip the screen all the way around from left all the way circular to the right. And then all you have to do is push the the adjustment away from you, okay? And 
you have no issues, you can zoom really close and you get a really perfect adjustment off that. So that's the tip on that wind. When you're gonna adjust, turn from left to right the screen so you can push your adjustment instead of going from right to left and having to pull it over through those trees, okay? That'll save you five or 10 seconds on trying to zoom in, zoom out, get the right adjustment. Trust me, you don't, You need every second you possibly can on these adjustments with that shot clock being so quick, okay? All right, so that's tip number one on that. Whole, or excuse me, shot number two, big dog seven or six or seven. You're gonna use uh, zero top spin, five right spin, max adjustment, quarter ball curl to the right at most, all right? Because you possibly catch the rough down there other than that. And then you can, if you're aggressive like me, put a quarter of the yellow ring on the right rough or into the right rough because, you know, if you leave the just the edge of the yellow ring on the rough, you have at least a, a maybe a one and a quarter rings away from that rough when you hit the ball perfect. And you have a lot more room to try to get the ball over to the right side of the green to give yourself a chance at albatross. But if you can't hit the ball perfect, you get nervous on these shots, just leave it in the middle of the pad up there and put your full um, complement of uh, side spin on it, just a teeny bit of overpower, just so you make sure you get past that rough down there, get it on the green, 10, 15 squares to the left of the hole is not gonna kill you, make your perfect putt and you get yourself a guaranteed eagle, all right? So let's do that. So those are some of the little skill shots and uh, requirements you're gonna need on hole number six. All right, hole number seven, par three. Again, couple options here, Goliath five, six, seven, or the Saturn six, seven, eight. 20% max adjustment. First shot um, could be Goliath or Saturn. <clears throat> We'll, stock, we'll talk about the Goliath. Goliath six or seven, no backspin, full right spin, quarter ball curl to the right with max adjustment, okay? And what I wanna do is I just wanna highlight max adjustment just to keep it consistent. Um, orange ring is gonna cut the right rough. Make sure the second bounce makes the fairway, okay? Or at least the collar area. If you don't do that and push it back up a little bit to make sure that second bounce is going to get there because of all that right curl, right? Not curl, but all that right spin, it's going to come in and just go directly to the right. And if you don't have enough power on it, it's going to hit in the rough and then it's either going to stay in there or just trickle out and you're going to have a chip shot instead of a potential hole in one for yourself. Now, this is where I've only made one hole in one on these four different accounts, and that's using the Saturn 8. Let's talk, talk about Saturn 6 first. No backspin, full right, quarter ball, right curl, max adjustment. Everything else stays the same with the orange ring cutting the right rough, okay? Make sure that second bounce makes the fairway. Saturn 8, zero backspin, full right, which is seven right spin, seven bars. You're gonna be at max adjustment at 20%. The yellow ring cuts the right rough this time. The second bounce is 50% between the collar and the rough. If you, after you set everything up, you make sure that that second bounce is halfway between the edge of the collar and the edge of the rough. That second bounce has to be 50% between those two. And then you're gonna put a baby curl. When I say baby, baby curl, do not touch the white power inner circle, but only move it until you see the inner power circle breaking. It breaks, so it's a solid, and then when you move it over, it breaks apart. As Soon as you see it break apart and you're not touching the white power circle, that's when you watch the needle go back and forth, hit it perfect, and with a kingmaker, it goes directly in the hole for a hole in one. So I wish all of you the best of luck on that shot. And hopefully um, in the opening in the weekend, you'll get it at least a couple times um, and then give yourself another opportunity to separate yourself from um, the field in your bracket. Okay, hole eight, par four, extra mile five, six, seven, or the big topper, four, five, and six. We're gonna use a Titan. With an extra mile, you're gonna use a berserker with the big topper. So we're gonna go ahead again, 
highlighted in green. So we're going to go ahead with the big topper shot. But in the extra mile, six and seven, you're going to go full top spin, three left spin. And you have to go 75% over power to the right fairway. And you're going to bounce it over the creek and try to rip it through that fairway and all that snow and get it close to the green. That's a lot of overpower and a lot of needle speed. And you have to really hit, have to hit it pretty much really close to great or you have to hit it perfect to be safe so that's why we're going to choose the big topper because you don't have to do any type of significant overpower so with the four or five big topper full top spin three left spin just a 10 percent of overpower after you make your adjustment you push back up to max on both of these whether it's extra mile or big topper it's 15 percent make your wind adjustment push it back up with the big topper and the berserker with the full top and three left, just a teeny bit of 10% overpower. Let it go. It's a nice, moderate needle speed. Hit it perfect. Should be down there on the green and give yourself either a really close chip or an easy putt for the eagle. Okay? Necessary that you make eagle there as well to stay equal to, if not slightly ahead of the people in your bracket in the opening and weekend rounds. Finally, hole number nine, par five, extra mile six or seven, or the big topper and the big dog. Again, we are choosing big topper because of its distance. If you look at big topper four and five, you get 217 in the air plus 100 topspin, 317. If you go extra mile six or seven, you're talking 234 plus 50 is only 284. 284 versus 317 seems like a no-brainer to me that you're going to get it further down there, giving you the opportunity to not have to hit overpower with your big dog, right? That needle is going to go a little bit faster if you're in the overpower range. So choose wisely on your on your club selection as well as your ball selection you need to know your accuracies your distances so you put yourself in the best position to get these holes completed in the fewest shots possible so here we go 10 percent on the adjustment full top spin on the big topper one right spin 10 percent over power just slightly overpowered should end in that 393 yard range if you don't catch any glitches i caught glitch on one hole and I only ended up 378, which made it very difficult because you had to overpower the big uh, the big dog, but we still made eagle, but just a glitch. So be careful of that. You want to adjust for the wind and then push back to max on any driver you're using, okay? And then the big dog, uh, six or seven, you're gonna go three and a half backspin, one right spin, max adjustment, half a square to the left of the cup, and then um, just for your wind at max and uh, hit it perfect. Give yourself an amazing opportunity for albatross. If not albatross, one, one and a half squares away for eagle. Click that. Take a look at your score. 16 under should be your score. And uh, if you can replicate that on the back nine, you're going to give yourself a 32. Well in advance, well top of the leaderboard, in my opinion, in your division or your bracket. And then if you can do that replicated score and that effort into the weekend, can't wait to hear about your gold banner, okay? So with that being said, I can't thank all of you enough. I wish you all the best of luck in the Holiday Hills opening round which starts tomorrow or actually 3 a.m eastern time tomorrow morning and uh we look forward to getting your comments down below um if you're not subscribed to the channel consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification so you get more information like this on a regular basis and then of course if uh, you like the content Go ahead, slam that thumbs up for us so we can continue to bring you the best quality content that we can provide here at On The Screws Golf. All right, here we go. With that being said, I hope all of you have an amazing, amazing rest of the afternoon and evening. And then good luck tomorrow and into the weekend from On The Screws Golf. Hank Moore says, see you on the course. See ya.